Today we're going to check out the My Brilliant Writing Planner and this was a suggestion from another viewer because I was on the lookout for planners specifically made for writers and I'm super excited this was suggested to me because as you know my biggest complaint was I was only finding planners on Amazon and they were self-published through Amazon and because of that they had a spine they didn't have the spiral. I am definitely a huge fan of the spiral because then pages lay flat. Uh, and if you want, you could fold it over. It's really thick. Uh, if you wanted to. So I think that was a definite plus too. So let's check this out and see what she put inside of it. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa, best-selling co-author of the Snow and Her Seven Seal series, and on this channel we talk all about romance writing, specifically for newbie and aspiring romance authors. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday. Now today is an extra day because I've been doing so many planner unboxings. Uh, I didn't want to spend one of my Mondays doing this, uh, but I did want to share this with you. This was a very huge thick planner but it's made just for writers and again if you would like to make a planner for writers because there's definitely a market for this make sure to check out my other channel pretty fabulous designs where pretty much all we talk about is planners how to make them how to design them how to do layouts anything you ever want to know about making your own planner i will teach you over there and I have a free course called Planner 101 that will walk you through everything from beginner to end, from beginning to end. So I will leave a link to that below. Now back to this planner, this one was $59.99, shipping was $12. And so that came to a total of $71.99. So this was not cheap. Now I was going to order this a couple weeks ago when those videos first came out, but I was really worried because when I went to the website, it was down, it was broken, I don't know what was going on. And then once it was finally back up, it still had some issues with it. It didn't, it wasn't laying out correctly, buttons weren't working, um, but I just took a chance because one of my viewers said, don't worry, she's really great. And I ordered it and it did arrive within a week later. I didn't get a confirmation or anything from her, so I was a little worried there for a week, but it miraculously just showed up at my door uh, a week later. So this is a planner by a Christian romance author named Susan Warren, and I've actually never read her stuff, but I do read Christian romance. I'm sure you've heard me mention, I love Jolene Navarro's books. That's my favorite Christian romance author, and she writes for Harlequin. Um, I will leave links to that below if you're interested. Uh, but let's just go ahead and check out this planner, and you can jump ahead to the wrap up if you want, but otherwise we're gonna do a quick flip through. A plain brown unmarked box and nothing else inside of it except the actual planner and it looks like it has a plastic wrap around it and their sticker and this thing is massively wide like it's so huge you're not going to want to carry this anywhere and these O coils I'm gonna guess this is three inches I've actually never seen anything this large just because they're typically not feasible um, because they're just too big and cumbersome. So this is about eight and three quarters wide and it is 10 and a quarter tall. And let's see the width, you can see the width is about one and a quarter. So it ain't thin. <laughs> Here we go. So this is a standard chipboard with just a sticker on top. These are O coils. So the problem with O coils, my biggest complaint with these is because they're clamped, uh, sometimes pages get stuck on here. So it's really hard to open and close it. Um, this is a coloring book cover. It looks like, yeah, the whole thing is black and white. So we have probably what's called, what I call a rinse and repeat, where every single month is going to be an exact replica of the month before. So we have an intro here, my story starts, and we talk about last year in review. Then we talk about your plans for 2019 and some of your writing habits. And then we talk about your dream board writing. Put your writing focus in the center. Brainstorm books that support the focus. So I guess you could write some craft books maybe that will help you with your writing. Prioritize your dreams. 
And over here, we start talking about write a novella, teach a class. Oh, these are just examples. And then you try to evaluate these, I guess, on how much joy it gives you, how much money you'll make from it, and how easy or hard is this for you. Uh, so over here, we talk about marketing. And the same thing, you just put one marketing, I guess, goal, and then just ideas around it. Same thing, you evaluate each one. Uh, over here we have story craft, put your craft focus in the center, and again, things around it, and then you evaluate each of those tasks that you put around it. Oops, I think I skipped the page. And dream board other, I guess this is just ideas, and then weekly, I thought that said June, time template. Something else, if you're making planners, I would highly advise against using these cute script fonts. They look very pretty in social media. In actual print, they're very hard to read. Same thing with these fonts down here. It's just a little difficult to read these. Um, anyways, morning, I guess this is your best week ever that you're planning out because you only get one page for that. Uh, your year in a glance priorities. So you have a column for January, February, March uh, for writing, marketing, craft, projects, other, and personal. So this goes on for the whole year. And then you get ha habit stacking. Um, so I don't actually don't know what this miracle Monday trigger an activity. Um, I actually don't know what, how to use that. So, uh, let's just move on to January. So we got month at a glance. We have those same categories, marketing, writing, other, uh, you get the whole, you get a two page spread for the month. Um, so just so you know, too, when you do planners, numbers are typically at the top right. Um, bottom right sometimes is just a little confusing for people. Um, or it's just not as intuitive. Uh, okay, so we have a menu. A menu, I guess what you want to eat for the week, maybe? Uh, writing, marketing, craft, other, other, social media tracker, calls to make, errands, and appointments. And then you have a daily, which is a little, let's see, do they have numbers? There's no numbers, so that's a little odd. Okay, so you have a daily here, and this is your verse. I'm not really sure what a verse is. Maybe she means a theme or like a quote. Um, today's needs, and then inspiration. Over here, you have do it, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So... I guess you can just, it's pretty open-ended and there, there were, again, there weren't any directions. So I guess you can put whatever you want up here. And then it's, I guess you just, again, put whatever you want over here. And then you have a block for Saturday, Sunday notes. Um, she wants you to track your water and then you can track some daily habits and then you can put appointments over here. And then it repeats over and over and over again. So that's pretty much the whole planner, but let's see, I think each month, Again, black and white, so it's an opportunity if you like coloring. I'm not really a fan of coloring, um, but if you are, this would be really great for you. You could color each month. Uh, and then let's jump here to the end where it says story. So this section is called story crafting, and it says what if, possible titles, premise, urgency, stakes, character, SEQ, SE. I think that's a cue, right? I don't know. Again, these fonts are just really hard to read. External goal, um, rough story plot, act one, two, two, and three, and then one page for notes, and then another what if, so we rinse and repeat, so you can, in theory, I guess, put down information for two different stories uh, here in this book, and then we're at the very end. And see, it's just hard to close because of that O-coil binding. So you're not able to close this. Uh, so you're gonna have to, it's like those binders that you get uh, from the off supply store. So you, they only go one way. Let's see the back. This is the back and is the back and the front cover next to each other. So what did you think of this planner? I have a couple things I wanted to mention. Um, aside from the fact that first, yes, I'm super excited that someone made a planner for authors, awesome. Uh, the other thing is I do like that there was a word count box for every single day. I think that's really important to track. Um, I love the priority chart equation, which was basically just any task or idea it had you brainstorm in the beginning section. It then went on to ask you to do a calculation where you were comparing 
basically how much happiness it brought you to work on it, like how excited were you, what financial ROI you think you would get from working on this task, as well as how difficult you thought it was. And then based on that, it would help you rank all of your tasks in order to determine what to work on first and maybe what to work on last or not at all. Um, the third thing was I like that it had a tracker for social media and different habits. Uh, the fourth thing is I love that it have has a spiral as I already mentioned in the beginning and that it has divider tabs for each month. Uh, the fifth thing and now I'm getting into things maybe I didn't like so much is that it's huge. I mean this is 456 pages. That's ridiculous. There's no reason a planner should ever ever be that large. Um, it's it's cumbersome to carry around. And more importantly, when you're writing, um, because it's such a huge slab, only three quarters of the page is really usable for writing because once your wrist hangs down, it's hard to write, things become illegible. It's just too high of a ledge for, I guess, a writing uh, space to me. Um, the other thing too was the fonts, and everybody does this, every newbie planner does this, um, they're illegible. And I know people like these pretty script fonts and they do look great on social media. It does not look good printed. It should never be inside of a planner. It just doesn't, uh, it just doesn't work, right? So you, you can barely read the words. Um, the sixth thing uh, is, oh, that was the sixth. The seventh thing is there wasn't a lot of room to write, uh, even though there were 456 pages um, there was not a lot of space to get things down I think she tried to solve this by putting two weeks in there which also is very odd I've never seen anyone do that you only need to do a two page layout for a week you don't need four pages so like she would have Monday Tuesday Monday through Saturday uh, in a vertical format. And then on the next page, she would have Monday through Sunday in a horizontal layout. There's no reason to do that. Um, that's just obviously, a, I think, um, overkill. And, you know, it added 104 extra pages in here that you really didn't need to, to do. Um, the other thing too is number eight is the pages. And I'm sure this is I'm guessing this is what she was thinking because this is so thick she wanted to use the thinnest paper possible now because she used the thinnest paper possible you can actually see ghosting from what's on one page over to the other and that's not even with the writing i'm just talking about what she has printed on the page once i wrote in these i saw ghosting on the other side as well as you know i like to use these liquid pen markers and it actually bled through all the way to the other side and the last thing i'll say about this planner is i wasn't really a big fan of the cover because the, the watercolor paint it looks more like a children's book to me and you know or something maybe for a small child so it really wasn't my style uh, you have that same style on the back but I did like the bright colors um, but you only have colors on the outside just remember it's all black and white on the inside so that is another uh, Debbie Downer if you do like getting color now when you purchase this you get an access to a free course now it's going to be very confusing because it's not obvious if you have access to a free course because it's going to take you through through a bunch of links for you to purchase Novel Academy from her, which is ranging anywhere in price from, I believe, $650 all the way up to $13.50, depending on which level you purchased into. And I don't know if the course is any good or it's bad or anything like that, um, but it seems to be uh, a good marketing strategy on her part to just funnel everybody into um, this uh, premium course that she is offering. So again, something to think about if you have a planner, it could be a gateway to get people to purchase. She's probably assuming if you were willing to pay almost $100 for a planner, you're probably okay with paying $13.50 for a writing course. Just a, just a guess. So let me know in the comments below what you thought of this planner. And also remember, if you would like to make your own, uh, make sure to sign up for Planner 101 and check out my other channel, Pretty Fabulous Designs. But just to recap, here's what I thought of this planner. I love that it had a word count check for every day. I like the priority chart equation. I like that it has a social media and habits tracker. I love that it spiral and had tab dividers. Um, I did find it a way too huge and cumbersome and heavy to carry. Uh, I did think the fonts were illegible um, and hard to read. I think that there could have been more room to write uh, things inside of it, but maybe that's how she solved it by having two weekly layouts, which again, I, I did find odd um, just from as a planner designer. Um, 
Number eight, uh, the pages all ghosted onto each other because they were so thin. In fact, when you wrote on it, did the same thing as well as it bleeds through if you like to use a liquid ink marker like I do. And again, the cover uh, wasn't a big fan just because it reminds me of a kid's cover, but maybe that's just because I'm not a mom. Um, maybe if I was a mom, I'd think it was cool or um, awesome. I don't know. Anyways, that was the wrap up of the My Brilliant Writing Planner. So I hope everyone's having a fabulous day and I will talk to you guys on Monday. Bye.